Hey everybody, welcome to the final episode of Cedar Fair's Adventure. If you've been sticking around with me and watching these videos since the very beginning, which was early last year, then you have made it to the last episode. And today I'm basically going to show you around some of the coasters. I'm not going to show you every detail. If you want to like check it out in ultra like close up detail and all the little bits I put in, there is going to be a download link in the description box below, which will take you to the Steam uh, workshop where you can download this park. So basically I'm going to go in, explore the right side of the park first, and then I'll do the left side of the park second. So here I'm just going to show you quickly up the entrance path towards the main entrance of the park. This was the very first thing I built in this park and it seems like such a long time ago that I don't really remember building it anymore. But um, I'm still happy with how it looks, so I'm all, it's all good. I did add some more things along the way as each update of the game came out and there was new things. So I added in some extra little bits to the previous parts I've done earlier in the, in the game. So I didn't want to do a too big a main street. I don't really feel like that is a Cedar Fair kind of thing. They just kind of have a few little plaza, what I call like a plaza building. There's a few little shops either side. Nothing crazy, not like a, a Disney main street, which goes on for a long time. So this is quite a short little small, um, it's more of an entrance plaza than a main street with the small theatre there at the back. So let's go down the right side of the park. Here you come to two paths, one goes straight ahead and one that goes off to the left. So we're gonna go down the one that goes straight first towards um, where the, the, I can't remember what it's called now, the Flying Cobra Coaster is, the yellow arrow dynamics coaster. So it's got quite a nice queue for this one already, which is looking quite nice. So basically I'm just gonna zoom out and show you the whole layout and watch the train run around the track and so you can see the coaster in action. Just a disclaimer, the game is quite laggy. My computer is not the, the, the highest spec computer and this park has so much detail in it that it, is, it even struggles to, um, takes quite a long time to load up the actual game, but some of the clips I will show you are slightly laggy in places. So if you can just kind of ignore that and bypass it and just enjoy what I'm showing, then it's all good. So this was actually the first roller coaster I built in the park. And I actually built it somewhere else and then I ended up saving it as a blueprint and moving it to where it is now. So this is the little plaza area by the entrance of the Flying Cobra Coaster, where we have like a, a chair playing ride and some go-karts. And then also we have Wolf Run, which is the kind of the classic looking wooden coaster I built for the park. So this, this one is kind of on the outside of the park. It kind of crosses out past the park boundary. Um, there is a maintenance road there around the outside of the of the ride there, which goes underneath the turnaround structure, which comes from the backstage area, which I'll show you briefly on later. So this coaster is just kind of an out and back style design with some airtime heels. So again, I'm gonna show you the the train running around the track. This um, coaster was actually inspired by Hurler at um, King's Dominion and at Carowinds, I believe it's at Carowinds. Um, one of them's now been converted into an RMC, I believe, in, I believe it's the one at King's Dominion. Um, but yeah, it's not the same design, but I wanted to use that style ride, that kind of lift hill kind of thing with the drop coming back on itself and yeah, I just use those rides as, uh, as quite a bit of inspiration to build these layouts and also with like the brake run and how I did the transfer track and the way I built it and did all the little details in there I used from looking at photographs and references of the real things. So across from Wolf Run we do have the, the log flume. Which I really love how it's kind of like really got that I don't know, it's got that, that wilderness kind of theme to it with the entrance there and the rocks and the water. I think it's really cool. So the most of the log flume's actually in the back part of the park in amongst the trees. And then just the kind of final drop is visible from the path there. So if we carry on up from Wolf Run, we have to the right, there is the, the Patriot roller coaster, the inverted one there, the blue one. 
Um, the entrance is actually on the other side of the river. Um, but we have the drop zone tower here, which is basically a the launch drop tower that comes with the game. And I just customized it with some curved walls to make it look like a drop tower. And here we have Intimidator, which is the park's Intamin mega coaster. This was heavily inspired by Expedition G-Force at Holiday Park in Germany. That's a great ride. If you've not been on it, I suggest you go there and ride it. The park's not particularly like the best. It's not got a big selection of rides, but the one roller coaster that they do have is incredible. So I kind of wanted to build this inspired by that one, just packed full of airtime, used some overbank curves and a figure of eight style layout. And of course, the theme is taken from the Intimidator ride, especially the one from... Uh, I actually used the, the Intamin style from the King's Dominion version, and I used some of the theming, like the photo booth exit shop. I took that from some concept art I saw from Carowinds from the B&M version of Intimidator. So I'm kind of, I'm really happy with how the Intimidator Plaza turned out. This building, the red building now is actually blue in the past. I changed it red to kind of make it match a bit better. But over the bridge, we actually have um, the plaza area for the Patriot inverted roller coaster. And also there's the swinging ship there as well. Also, there's actually a lot of sick on the paths and I have realized that when I'm showing you. So I have actually in between hired some handymen to clean up a little bit as I'm showing you around because some areas have really got a lot of sick on the floor. I'm gonna guess it's from this coaster and the swinging ship. But yeah, anyway, here is the Patriot inverted roller coaster. This was just basically based on every B&M inverted roller coaster. They're all very kind of similar. Um, the swerve drop taken kind of from Alpengeist at Busch Gardens, Williamsburg. And then the rest of it is basically just my own design, just piecing together the typical kind of B&M layout. You know, the loop, zero G roll, the Cobra roll, the helix into a mid course break run, that kind of thing. And this is the bridge going over from that area, which goes out underneath Patriot. I tried to make some like coaster nets there out of some wooden pieces, just to make it look like coaster nets to stop stuff landing on the people's heads below. This path kind of goes like through the trees, which is, I think is really cool. Um, and then comes out under the log flume and back out to where we started. So that is basically the right side of the park. Now we're going to go off to the left, which takes you across this uh, railway track here. And here you have two options. You can either go to the right, which takes you over to a brand new area where there's two coasters and a few rides, which is across that bridge just right in front of us there. Or if you go straight on, it takes you to another area. And if you just take an immediate left, there is this children's kind of Planet Snoopy area. Um, so I built this nice little train station with like a gift shop inside there for the train to pass through, which goes around in a circle around this side of the park. There is this ride in the middle, which I can't remember what I called now. And then this purple roller coaster just here is the Great Pumpkin Coaster. And it's perfect because there's pumpkins in the game in the prop section. So, or is it the plant section? I can't remember right now, but they're perfect for the theme of this ride. So I just plop those down. This is just a really nice, simple kiddie coaster. just behind Planet Snoopy, there is this American diner with plenty of seating areas for the guests. Inside there is just, you know, your general kind of shops for the people to buy stuff. So there's two bridges here over into this land. Here we have Twisted Cyclone. Surprise, surprise, where I got the name from. And this is just basically a family spinning coaster. It's actually, now that I look at it, I think the layout is kind of short and I probably could have made it a bit longer but I'm kind of happy with how it is now. Um, so I don't want to change it, but in retrospect, I think I could have made this one a bit longer. But I'm happy with the color scheme. I think it's really cool. So just across from that ride is the Fireball. Wait a minute. And then behind that is this kind of Tidal Wave ride. Um, I've just used the log flume for this one because there isn't actually a Tidal Wave ride in the game. But it's just a simple kind of double down, super splash ride. This is, excuse me, a damn fine cup of coffee. 
but just from there there is actually another railway crossing which takes you into this kind of little area where this new wooden coaster which I've based on a GCI. A GCI is a, a brand of wooden roller coaster and I've named this one Myth which I took inspiration from Mystic Timbers. So this is quite a large spread out layout. It's not particularly the longest but it really does cover a lot of land at the back of the park in amongst the trees. I've tried to go for like a classic GCI swooping drop I did find out from one of my viewers that actually GCI coasters never pass under a curve. Apparently it's something to do with structural stuff um, and this actually does pass under a curve if you just see here um, after the first drop. Um, I didn't actually know that but I think the actual general look of the ride looks like a GCI and I've put on those Millennium Flyer trains that the, the game provides, the little two-seater cars and I'm happy with how that looks. So this is the final kind of back area of the park behind the American Diner. I added some fire in there on the um, theatre. This is like a stunt show in there. Just behind that is like a, a warehouse backstage area. And there's like, like a little gate there where the staff can kind of go through. Here's some toilets here on the floor. Um, I tried to make some nice kind of shrubbery around those. I added some more bushes from the last time you saw me build that. And then here is the final coaster of the park, Rogue Runner. This is a Intamin launch coaster and I actually based it on Stealth from Fort Park with the layout and then I used the support structure from Accelerator from Knott's Berry Farm to do the supports on it. I also again added some more details on that one since I last built it. I added some catwalks on the top of the top hat element and some other little bits. So now let's just do a quick overview of the park. It's the original backstage area that I built way back in one of the first or second episodes. Kind of warehouses and kind of staff room areas and staff canteen, that kind of thing. So yeah, I'm just gonna show you around now, just kind of zoomed out at my maximum zoom out and um, just show you the kind of areas. As I said already before, if you wanna explore it into more detail, then do hit that download button in the Steam Workshop and as I said the link is down below in the description box. But I'm really happy with the park. Um, I don't know if I could have done it any better to be honest. I have had some ideas for expansion. I don't know if I actually really want to do it. Um, but I think there's a, a few places where you could actually expand the park. And maybe if any of you download it and you want to play and build um, it would be cool to see what you can't kind, of, kind of come up with. Maybe you delete some of the rides I've built and add your own in. Um, but I definitely think there's a space where the Super Splash ride is. If you got rid of that, you could take a path up and then there's a big area of land kind of here behind the wooden coaster, but also on the other side of it, in between the Rogue Runner coaster and Myth. So kind of where I'm pointing now with the cursor, I think there's... Um, space in there to, to expand and build something so thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed this video smash that subscribe button press the like if you've enjoyed the video and thanks for watching and i'll see you all next time with some more disney videos now that this one is finished so i'll see you then bye